Hello and welcome to my channel. Uh, today's video is another craft kit. Uh, so I worked with some air dry clay a couple weeks ago where I made or tried to make dinosaurs. Uh, then I saw this one on Amazon and I think it's a little bit more dear than the previous one. The previous one was only a fiver. This one, I can't remember the exact price. I'll put it up here, hopefully if I remember. Um, but this is a food one, so it's a mini food. This is a different brand as well. This is a mini food for Tiny Cooks Air Dry Clay Kit. Um, so there's three versions of it. There's this one here, which is food from around the world. Then there is one that is like a bakery. And then a third one, which is um, space themed. <laughs> so I got this one here. So it's for ages six and up. And you have food from all over the world. You've got food from uh, Japan, China, um what else america mexico italy all over <laughs> so yeah i just thought it'd be really fun to try obviously um as you saw from last time i'm not very good with air dry clay but i thought i'd give it another go so this is what it comes with it comes with bags of clay so 10 bags of clay so 10 full bags 10 reusable bags which is great because the last kit once you opened the clay that was it there was nothing to really store it in whereas this one comes with uh, resealable bags so that you can put the clay into it so it doesn't dry out. Uh, then we have craft three craft cult, I can't speak, three craft tools, one rolling pin, a bottle of varnish so you can use that to add a bit of, put, a bit, put a bit of shine on your clay once it's dried, uh, 3D paint pens, you get four of them, two, uh, two mini bamboo steamers, one mini shakshuka pan, one mini plastic white tray, one mini pair of wooden chopsticks, one sheet of A4 cardboard boxes, and one A5 sheet of fortune cookies. Plus three easy step-by-step -step tutorials. Um, so yeah, there's the back and there's the front. Um, so this is very exciting. So I'll quickly open it up just to give you a, a rough idea of what's inside it. Uh, and then I'll move it onto the table where you can see it in more detail and I try to make some of these. <laughs> so first it comes with this little booklet, um, which is very, very cute. And it's very, very detailed, a lot more detailed than the previous kit. But again, the last kit was only fiber, so you know, you get what you pay for. Um, so yeah, again, these are the three kits you can get. So you do, you get the space, you get the um, bakery, sweets and desserts, and you get the food from around the world. So that's them all. Then, um, these are all the tools you get, including the clay. Um, and that's just a picture of all the food you can make. Uh, and then it also gives you some tips about um, the stuff you're getting, about the clay and about the, um, the glaze and all. And then it's also really good in that it tells you um, how to make certain shapes. So it's telling you how to make pyramids, how to make cones, cylinders, stars with the clay. Um, it's telling you how you can use the, diff the different tools for different things. It's telling you what will happen if you mix the clay, what colors you can make. Uh, and then it goes into the items themselves. So it gives you a step-by-step -step with pictures of what to do. And also tells you what colors you need. And it also comes with a fun tip. So for example, this is the pizza. And its tip is, did you know that pizza originally actually originated back in ancient Greece and Egypt, where it was a piece of flatbread and topped with olive oil and various spices? Tomato, spice, tomato sauce was added to the modern pizza in the late 18th century in Naples, Italy. In the US, 350 slices of pizza is eaten every second, and the most popular topping is pepperoni. So there you go. Plus, if you're someone like me who probably works more with a visual, visual instructions, such as a video, there is a, there's a QR code they're called, uh, which you can scan and it will bring up a video so you can follow the video. So there's, so it does all of them, it tells you exactly what you need, how to do it, and it also gives you a fun fact about the um, bit of food. So it's really, really cool. And I can't wait to get started. And also at the very back, you can make your own food. So maybe a bit of food that from where you come from. So for example, I'm from Northern Ireland, so it'd probably be soda. We're very fond of our bread, especially breads you can have for breakfast. 
um, breads that you can um, fry for you know having a fry up <laughs> but yeah it'd probably be something like that and we're also really into your Belfast bats and also it'd probably be something like that that I would make I'm trying to think or if you go elsewhere in fact let me know in the comments below uh, what would be the dish for your country that you would probably make um, so yeah and the clay that you get is a lot bigger as well look at the size of the clay you're getting it's very very big um, and then there's just the rest of the items that you're getting. So you're, there's a lot in here. It looks very, very promising. Um, I'll probably struggle with this just as much as I did with the dinosaurs, but it's fine. I'm going to give it a go. Um, also, what I was thinking what I could do is, because um, like I keep saying, I work better with polymer clay. That's what I work with. Basically, I don't really, oh, sorry, in the stand, um, I don't really work with air dry clay very, very rarely. I mean, I could probably count in one hand and how many times I've used air dry clay. So I work a lot with polymer clay. So maybe what I can do to sort of, you know, um, reclaim myself, I don't know what the word would be, um, to uh, bring back some honour to myself, uh, I might bring out the polymer clay in a later video and try and make maybe some dinosaurs or some food to prove that I can work with clay, just um, a different type of clay. <laughs> but anyway, enough chatting for me. I'm going to move this camera to a different angle so you can see in better detail and I'm going to attempt to make some of these foods, so wish me luck. Okay, so here is the kit sitting down so you can see it in more detail. So it's called Mini Food for Tiny Cooks Air Dry Clay Kit. No baking required, 11 easy step-by-step -step picture tutorials inside and, it's inside and it's for ages 6 plus. So it's for foods all around the world. And let's open it up. And this is what's inside it. So we have the cookbook, as I showed you earlier, the air dry clay. And it's very detailed. It tells you what clay you need, how to shape it. It even gives you some fun facts about the items themselves. Um, it tells you what the contents are, how to prep, how to glaze, um, how to do the techniques, and how to mix the colours and all. So yeah, this book comes a lot, so even if you're someone who isn't very familiar with clay, this could be a good kit. Also, um, there is a lot of clay here, as you can see. It is very big bags of clay, so we get two bags of these, and there's a lot of clay in them. Plus, which is awesome. They come with resealable bags. And then these, I imagine, are some of the um, props for putting the food in. Maybe this is like for like the sauces and all I'm imagining. We have sauce pan and all. And then we have some tools. And we have a rolling pin. We have a blank piece of paper. We have this. I think this is, is this the glaze maybe, I'm assuming? Let me see. I think this is the glaze on a knife and get it out of the packaging. There we go. So yeah, I think this is the glaze. So that's awesome. It also comes with your glaze. Um, how many times am I going to say that word? <laughs> and then I imagine this is the stuff that you take out and put together. And I think this is like the plates. And these are um, the sort of cardboard things that you put some of the food in for takeaways. So yeah, that's all that comes in this box, as you can see. So I'm going to try and attempt to make some of this stuff. Hopefully I do a good job, we will see. And um, yeah, let's see how well I do. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna try and make pizza. All right, let's move something more comfy. So we have, so first we need to make the pizza dough, which means mixing brown and white. So I don't know if this is too much or not enough. Let's just find out together. Let's mix this up. close enough. So I'm going to mix the rest of these off screen because I imagine it'll be a bit boring for you guys but yeah we have mixed yellow and white to make the cheese, mix red, need red clay for the sauce, mix brown, red and white clay to create the pepperoni and they're optional you can have black, black olives, black clay for olives so I think I will put them on because my boyfriend loves olives, I don't, he does so I'll make it for him. Also, the clay feels really nice, I will say that. It does feel very satisfying to squish. This would make a very good, like, sensory kind of um, activity to do. 
Um, I do enjoy this, but anyway, I'm going to mix the rest of these up and then I'll come back to you. Give me a second. Okay, here they are, all rolled up. So we start with the base. So making sure these don't touch because if any of these colors touch, it's very sticky. So they just stay there. So roll the pizza dough into a ball and gently fl roll flat with the rolling pin. Use the rolling ball tool to create the crust. So let's do that. have the phone attached to a tripod on the table I thought it might be easier than have the big tripod tripod um see if that works and it's easier for me because it's given me a lot more space but it's not so great for you guys because if I move the table too much it makes the tripod move so apologies this is a work in progress so let's just see how this goes There's our sauce now applied uh, and then it says to, to create the cheese roll cut out the clay as thinly as possible use the tool with a knife to gently slice the clay so I think it just makes you want to pretty much do that so I think rather than do that which I feel like cutting this type of clay will be so fiddly because it's such a sticky clay I'm instead just going to roll it out do that and then just stick it I think that might work better like again best tools are your hands because i feel like it looks pretty much exactly the same as their picture Thank you. 
So then it says for the pepperoni, you roll it into a ball or into like a cylinder shape. Yeah. And then slice with the connect hole, which again, like I said, I can't imagine slicing this type of clay is going to be very easy. So again, I will probably just use my hands. So let's do that. So here is the pepperoni. And I'm realizing I didn't um, cut off the get any black clay out. So again, I'm just going to use my hands. I think it might be a bit bigger actually. So it's bigger than the um, olives when I put them on. And yeah, I'm just using my hand to sort of shape it. So just going in circles as I flatten it. And let's see how this looks. There we go, there's one. Also, it's really nice. It's been a while since I've worked with clay. It's even polymer clay I've not worked with for a wee while because I've been so busy with work. So this is one thing I love about this channel. This channel sort of like it's got me back into crafting. So thank you everyone who's followed me and subscribed and all. You sort of helped me to um, get that spark back into not only my doll collecting, uh, toy collecting and all, but also um, into my crafting as well. <laughs> It's been so nice to get back into that too. Um, I hadn't realised just how little of it I was doing because, you know, I got caught, off, caught up in life. And um, I wanted to show off some of the craft kits I got and then it kind of got me realising I haven't been really crafting that much when I started working the crafting kits. So this has been really, really nice. So even if these videos don't do as well as the other videos, I don't mind. Um, they're therapeutic for me, <laughs> I think is the way they go about it. Um, don't know about the rest of you guys, but to watch it, but for me it's very therapeutic. That was a very big slice there. Um, anyway, I think that's enough because I'm going to be putting olives on it next, so there's my pizza so far. So now for olives, roll small balls into, oh, I the cutter, roll small balls into, all for the olives and using the small ends, this bit here, um, of the tool, push in a ball to make a small hole. Okay, so let's try and do that. And if you hear any noise in the background, it'll start raining, <laughs> which is actually quite nice. I'm quite enjoying it. Working while it rains outside. And the magpies are giving off because of that. Which, by the way, anyone who is feeding the birds at the moment, are you having the same problem as me, where it's being impossible to feed them at the moment because they're just eating so quickly? There we go, there's one. Um, I'm literally filling up their um, seed bowl thing every single day now and it's costing me a fortune. <laughs> it used to be that I would like put the food out and it would probably last like a week and now that's not happening. <laughs> literally it's every day and I've actually run out of um, fat balls because that seems to be their favourite uh, which also just so happens to be the more expensive of the options to buy so thank you birds. I'm gonna have to start charging them at this rate because I can't afford to keep buying it. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna have to look around so if I can find any more fat balls for cheap. <clears throat> so if anyone knows any British stores that are selling fat balls cheap, let me know. I think Home Bargains are usually quite good. If I'm not mistaken, but we'll see. I'll, I'll shop around. Um, I can't do it at the moment because as I'm recording this, it is the 12th. Which for anyone who's not from Northern Ireland, is when we have the parades, which means everything is pretty much shut down. <laughs> Nothing else happens except the parades, so. I decided to take that day to sort of just chill in my craft room, seeing as there was nothing to do in the outside world other than watch parades. Which I don't mind watching parades, but yeah. There we go. What do you guys think? Let's see if I can lift this without getting damaged. I think I made it a bit too big because this is the plates that they gave us and um, unless I cut it into sizes I don't think it's going to fit the plate. Um, I don't know, maybe, I think that's Barbie size would you say? Um, I'm happy with that. So I think I'll make the rest of these off camera. I'll make a couple more of these off camera just so you're not too bored. <laughs> and then I will show you the end result. So give me a minute. Okay, so I have been working on this for about an hour, I think, just under an hour, and 
I will be honest, this has been really fun to do. I really enjoyed it. I did a good bit of the crafts in this, or the food. Not all of it though. Um, there was a few I didn't do. Um, but I did most of it. And guys, there is still, if you look, this box is just full of clay. I didn't even, the pink hasn't been opened, the blue hasn't been opened, the purple hasn't been opened. Haven't opened any of those three. And the great thing is, because I supplied bags, I can seal up the clay that I did use so I can reuse it again. And as you can see, I think the one that I had the least amount of is the brown because I used brown for pretty much nearly all of these. So this it's the one that is probably most used. And as you see, there's still a good bit there. There's tons of white left, lots of black. Um, but yeah, there's still loads of clay left to use. So that's brilliant. So if I get another urge to do this, I have those still to use. And I have these bags as well to use. Um, and I did use the tools. Um, I ended up bringing some of my own tools out, um, but I did use these. I don't think I even touched the roller. I just ended up using my hands for most of it. Um, but still, it's good to have. Um, I will say the varnish just smells like nail polish. I, I wouldn't be surprised if this turns out just to be like clear nail varnish because that it literally just smells like nail varnish. Um, and let's see. So let's see, then these here, which you could use for like the sauces and all, I did use mostly the red and the yellow for sauces. Um, but let me show you what I mean. So these ones here, um, I haven't ended up using up. I was thinking maybe I could either sausages in here or um, a fry maybe might be quite cool. Um, so that's an idea. I can do that another day. Um, but let's go, th maybe we'll go through the book and I can show you what I made. So um, let's see, that tells you all about the stuff. Da, da, da. Here we go. So we have the pizza, which I already told you about. You already seen the pizza. Um, so there it is. I don't. Uh, I tried cutting a thing in it because I wanted. I thought it might be nice to have like a slice sort of thing. I don't know if that worked or not. <laughs> also, the um, the red sauce is sort of like dyed my hands. If you're wondering why my hands are red, um, so word of warning: if you get the sauce stuff on your hands, it will dye them, and then that in turn will get into the clay as you're working with the clay. But anyway, so that's the pizza and all. The pizza itself is kind of too big to go onto the plate, so that's fine. Um, so there's that, and I already told you the fact about the pizza. Next was the spaghetti and meatballs um, with bread. Let's see if I can get this because it's kind of stuck. <laughs> Here we go. Um, I didn't do a too good of a job on the plate itself, but I think it wasn't too bad job. I'm very happy with the um, the bread. I think it came out best. But yeah, that's that one. I might put a bit more um, glaze on it actually. And actually, even though it's already on the plate, I'm going to put it on this plate just so it's because it's like sticking and everything, so I'll make it easier to move about. Um, so that's spaghetti meatballs. Um, did you know spaghetti served with tomato sauce can be dated back to the 19th century in Naples and Italy? This was usually served with meats that are highly high in fat, like bacon, ham, or sausages. Meatballs started um, accommodating spaghetti around World War II in American cookbooks. So that's really cool. Uh, next is the hot dog, which I did make as well. So there's my hot dog. <laughs> I think it actually turned out quite good. Um, I'm very impressed with my hot dog. I kind of had to make another one because <laughs> I think it turned out really well. Um, so yeah, did you know the first hot dog was sold at a baseball game in 1893 and residents in Los Angeles consumed the most hot dogs than any other city. So there's the hot dog fact for you. Tacos, I did make tacos, so let me put that on a plate as well. There's my tacos. <laughs> but I think it's maybe chilli and um, lettuce on top. I think is what I was trying to go for, so there is it. I think it turned out quite well. <laughs> and yeah, taco fact, tacos are a traditional Mexican dish and Americans love tacos but they also love Taco Bells with around half the US population visiting a Taco Bell once every 11 days. And in case you didn't know, October 4th is considered a National Taco Day. Um, and then I tried to make the dim sum steamed boa. boa? Um, I don't think, I think these <laughs> didn't turn out too great. I'm not very happy with them. And I didn't attempt to make the dumplings because so that looked a little too difficult for me. Maybe next time I work on this. Then there was fortune cookies, but I didn't make them either. Um, burgers and fries I did make. So there's the fries. Um, it looks more like a cheesy chip, to be honest, because <laughs> I think the glaze 
kind of made it look more like a cheesy chip. And here's the burger. Um, I'm actually quite happy how the burger turned out. I think it's actually not too bad looking. <laughs> it's definitely an American burger. It's very big. Um, but yeah, I'm very happy with that. Um, and yeah, McDonald's sells 75 hamburgers every second with the average American eating a hamburger three times a week. In America, French fries are known as either French. Uh, French fries are simply fries, but in the United Kingdom, they're called chips. And in France, they're called fruits. I think that's what it is. So yeah, very interesting fact. Uh, ramen I didn't make, but there's that one. Um, sushi and wasabi. Uh, shakshuka, I think that's the one that you're meant to use with palm four. So maybe I might try and make that. It does look very cool. Uh, pancake, buttermilk pancakes. I definitely want to make them because I love pancakes. Um, and then obviously you can make your own. So I made a good few of them. There's still tons of clay left if I decide I want to try and have another go at it. But I think these will come out really well. I'm really impressed. Because uh, again, like I said, I'm not really that skilled with air dry clay. So I'm very happy with it. Um, so yeah, let me know. What do you think of this kit? I think it is worth your cash, definitely. It's I really enjoyed using it. Um, would you guys give it a go? Um, and if there's any other um, clay kits or just craft kits in general that you think I should give a go, let me know. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed doing this. I had such fun. And yeah, definitely highly recommend. <laughs> so anyway, that is it for this video. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.